What's up? I want to talk about qualifying your landscaping customers over the phone instead of driving out on a wild goose chase every time the phone rings and feeling like you're you're doing something or be you're being productive just because you're going to look at a property. Um, I wanted to make this video yesterday and didn't get around to it, but right now I'm live here, and uh, this would be my seventh, eighth season in the business because uh, I started in the middle of you know, whatever, back in like 2012. But I, I'm really beginning to see something clear I wanna share with you if you're in your first year or two or a couple years in the business that really, really, what's up Backwoods Northwest, Davis Outdoor, Jay Jenkins. Something that come, has been coming really, really, really clear to me to, its, to the point where it's undeniable. And sometimes there's two paths to enlightenment. Well, there's, there's several paths. One of the paths of enlightenment is uh, enlightenment through suffering. It's the way of the cross. You have to go and bang your head up against the wall so many times to go through so many situations and scenarios that it just starts to become clear of what works, what doesn't. And I want you to think of something that you wouldn't even consider doing. Like you just wouldn't do it. It's stupid, doesn't make any sense. There's no question. So if you think about, and I'm talking about going and uh, running out to give your customers quotes without first properly qualifying them over the phone, and there's four steps that I've identified that are some of the most important ones, and one is positioning, next is qualifying, disqualifying, the next is the trial close, uh, so qualifying, disqualifying, the trial close, and then the close, okay? So... <clears throat> Because the one one way of these four steps, one way is where you just lose money and you run around like a chicken with your head cut off and you don't understand why you're not making any money. And then the next one is where you're actually making money and you're closing customers. So it's one of those things where you have to go stop, stop. Let me really assess this situation before I just run off and do something and it takes a lot of self-control in facing fears what's up what's up um and i learned some of the stuff from stan genetic he said something to me interesting he goes when the spring breaks and you're swamped you only have a limited amount of days that you can fit projects in like you can't change time you can't change the quantum etheric field and make so you ever see like the the I'm gonna get into some analogies here to make this make sense because at first I was frustrated when he told me this I was like yeah but yeah but yeah but and then when I met Tom Reber and Steve Schinholzer from the contractor sales academy you know that in the seven stages of grief when you hear something first you're in like ultimate denial you you're like no way blah, blah blah I'm not an alcoholic you know and then you go through the grief then you go through the point where you're you have a breakdown and then you finally accept it and then it becomes undeniable truth. So he said you only have a limited amount of days to fill up your calendar. If you fill up that calendar with a bunch of low profit work, and this is extremely relevant to right now, you're on the hook to do all that work. Now the phone's ringing with all those high profit work and projects and you can't do anything because your hands are tied unless you can somehow get another crew going and manage that. But So here, here's, here's the sticking point. You have to look at the data of where you were. Because if, if, if you're in a position where you're afraid that, oh, what if the work doesn't come in like it did last year, you get all these kind of feelings. There are physics at play and there are laws of like reality and like Newton's lie, uh, Einsteinian physics, Newtonian physics, that the numbers don't lie. If you look at where you were last year this time, the year before, what's going on in your business? How many clients, how many recurring clients? What, is, what do you have set up with your marketing? Unless there's some type of complete economic breakdown, you're probably gonna have your phone ringing off the hook. And there's, there's a thing going on right now with contractors. I'm gonna circle back to what I'm talking about. There is more people in these suburban neighborhoods, clients that need their property maintenance, landscape jobs installed, anything, trees trim, lawns mowed, 
windows clean, you name it, then there are qualified contractors to actually do the work at the level required. So there's so much work out there that you could just be swapped up to your eyeballs and not even be able to handle it. So what I'm saying is if you just know and trust that you're about to be swamped up to your eyeballs. The phone is going to be ringing off the hook. It's going to be ringing like 30 times a day. You absolutely are in a key position to be very, very, very picky and qualify everything that comes across your path and be very selective and cherry picking what you do. So it's like you're, you ever heard the term, you're stepping over dollars to get to dimes. So that takes being able to say no, which goes against the sympathetic nervous system. It goes against our survival response to, I got to get money to survive like that. So the need for money will stop this. It'll put you into a reactive state. So you have to stop, realize your value and really qualify. Now, how this actually will, you got to follow me here. So you're on the phone with a customer. If you get really selective and you start to qualify, you flip the script, right? You're not like, sure, I'll run out there and I'll do it. I'll run out there, I'll give you a quote. I'll be there in 20 minutes. I'll be there tomorrow. If you really start to ask the customer qualifying questions, okay, so can you describe uh, the project you're looking to get done? Okay, oh, you need this fixed or removed or planted. Okay, about how big is it? Is it in the front yard or the backyard? Have you gotten any other quotes? Okay. How soon do you want to get this done? You're actually serving and helping the customer. Their time is extremely valuable. The more time you spend on the phone sifting through and qualifying that customer very, very, very carefully is the more they'll go, oh, I'm on the phone with a real, a real contractor who takes himself seriously right now. Now you're actually putting them, you're positioning yourself. That's what positioning is. A new, unique selling position, is, that's part of it as well. Uh, I don't hang up on people, but there's things you could do to get off the phone extremely quick. So let's just say you've got a, I don't know, what's your minimum? Let's say you got a $500 minimum to show up and do anything. I don't know what your minimum is. So you get really, really like, it's almost like, like someone's knocking at your door that you didn't invite over to your house and you look through the peephole. You're like, who the who the hell's at the door? Honey, did you invite anybody over? Who the hell is this knocking at my door? Why is this person on my porch? Should I let this person inside of my domain? My kingdom down? So listen. So on the phone, you get really specific with the customer, okay? Okay? Mm hmm You tell me a little bit more? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. Mmm, yeah. Okay, so based off what you told me, because I could tell you right now, ballpark over the phone, it's between one and 300 to do this, but I'd have to see it. It's between one and 2,000 or five and 8,000 to do that. Does that sound like in the ballpark, Bob? You ask them questions. You say, does that sound like in the ballpark? So you're, you're creating qualifying triggers step by step by step when you talk to the customer. And if at any time they fail, now you, you back up, whoa, 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 whoa. I might not even be the right guy for you. If they can make it through all the steps in the process, you didn't say, hey, I, I, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Now the customer is respecting you and they're seeing, if you position yourself properly, they won't want to go with anybody else. They'll want to go with you because it's a good fit. It's better to find out on the phone if it's not a good fit than to drive all the way to a customer's property feeling like you're doing something productive because you're just lying to yourself, you know? Now, and that's not to say that, you know, you might not be able to get there and upsell them or something, but I believe that if you're very, very careful and you realize how valuable your time is and you serve your customers wisely, you can get all that crap out of the way on the phone by asking very specific qualifying questions based off of, hey, your time, how much is your time worth? It's unlimited. You, you're a human being, God created you. Like, you're not a slave. You can't put a price on your head. So what if you had 20 phone calls come in and you very, very carefully selected, I don't know, 
three, four, five of them, and all the rest, it just wasn't a good fit. And now when you go there, then you can build a relationship with the customer. Like, like seeks like a water, tra like it tracks his own level. A desperate customer who's looking to just like get the cheapest price. If you're a desperate contractor who's just looking to get some work, you're gonna track those type of con those customers all day long, and they will become your clients. And then you do the same thing I did my first three, four years in business, where I built this whole business running around like a chicken with my head cut off, not making barely any profit because I thought I was doing the right thing, but I had all these customers who were just pillaging me, you know? So, all right, so the next step, I was talking about qualification. And the next is disqualifying. You say things on the phone to your customers that'll make them be like, oh, okay, this landscape contractor is serious. They." This guy's not gonna just run out and trim my bushes and put down one little yard of mulch, or he's not gonna cut my lawn one time. They're looking for a long-term relationship. I'm talking to somebody who takes themselves very serious. So they're actually gonna disqualify themselves and get off the phone with you as quickly as possible. Uh, and I say, don't be afraid to tell your customer, like, hey, we, we do have a $500 minimum to do anything. And um, you know, based off what I told you, it looks about you know this much in work, but does that, does that sound about right? You're not being disrespectful or anything. You're just calling it as you see it and you're respecting the customer. Why would you go drive out to a customer's property and walk around and give them a $10,000 quote when their budget's only two grand so you can feel like you're you're doing something important? You just wasted that customer's time and shame on, on both of you unless you want to get more practice. Okay, so we got uh, positioning, qualifying, disqualifying, and the next thing is the trial close. I'm talking about the trial close. That means you talk the customer into you ask them questions and do a trial close so they'll say like yeah that sounds about right yeah so so we're talking you know 1500 two grand with the customers talking like that now we're talking business now, now if you were thinking like 800 and the customer says so you're thinking uh 12 1500 bucks the customer says that shut up don't say anything don't say oh no it's only gonna be like 800 bucks man this is the world of commerce. So you could be a good moral person and that's good. I'm a very moral person. Like I'm very transparent with my customers, but you're also in business to make profit, right? So if the customer, because this is one of those areas where it's like a capitalist type of world that we live in. And the more you realize we're in a very kind of capitalist environment, the very customer that you think you're super cool with, who's such a nice guy and you and you just want to serve your customers and should have a heart and a, of service and gratitude, that customer will do that customer will walk all over you and be like, I literally just got this landscaper to do like that. You don't know that maybe another landscaper too like quoted this guy double and now you're coming out doing this shit for like 800 bucks. So the customer says you're thinking 12, 1500 say yeah, that sounds about right based off what we're talking about. And if I get there and there's something a little different, now you're creating, you're building expectations and boundaries. It could be, you know, it could go up to two grand if there's extra debris or we have to, we uncover something, you know, it could go as high as 2,500. So if we say 15 to 2,500, does that sound in the ballpark, Bob? Because, uh, you know, I'd like to come out there and walk your property with you, but I understand your time's valuable. But uh, so you got the, the cookie. This is something called posture posture in your <clears throat> in your tone of voice your personality your way of being is you pull up in a drop top Corvette and you know you're in a drop top Corvette right it's not a cocky hubris thing and somebody says to you they're like that's not a Corvette that's a kit car that's a Pinto with a body kit on it and you're like no it's a Corvette you want to go for a ride nah you're like all right I'm leaving are you sure? I'm not going to sit here and bag you and try to convince you because I know you know your value and you know your worth and you know that you're in high demand. So when you feel that yourself and you just have a healthy self-esteem about that, your customer is going to feel that and they're going to want to do business with you because, dude, I'll tell you right now, Keith Kelfis, uh, three weeks ago, I got ripped off by a contractor. I hired a cleaning company to come clean my house to surprise my wife. They whacked my credit card almost double 
without my explicit authorization. And now, instead of fighting for a few hundred bucks back, I'm like learning a very valuable lesson of what it's like to be a homeowner, right? Because most of us landscapers and lawn care guys, we haven't actually hired contractors to come do work for us. So we don't know what it's like to be on the other side of the fence and feel what it's like to be on the phone, to have a contractor come and quote and, and send us a bill. We don't know what it's like to have a contractor come knocking at our door. And I'm getting to a point here saying, uh, I messed up and I need another 800 bucks. Wouldn't you be upset and furious? So you write, you, you write the contractor check for 800 bucks because he messed up, closed the door, and now you and your wife are in a big fight. There's stress in your household. This lasts for a week straight. You feel like you got ripped off by that contractor. Like, you don't know what happens behind closed doors. So I think that the more you establish your positioning and your credibility with the client, and you can say things like, um, I didn't look at the company's online reviews. Yes, I did. The company had a bunch of positive five-star reviews and they only had a few negative reviews. And they seemed to might be the most qualified company in my uh, my area. So I'll, I'll tell that story in a different video. I have a podcast coming out soon that I've recorded all about this, uh, where I believe even as the homeowner, the contractor, whatever, don't, people are, This, I'm digressing, but this is kind of important. There's an amazing book by Malcolm Gladwell called The Tipping Point, and he talks about how people in our Western culture were so busy that we sometimes, uh, well, all the time, people are making decisions and crossing br bridges and even making critical decisions without having all the information that we need because we literally just don't have time to do all the research. So we're pulling triggers and making decisions on things that one out of 20 times it blows up in our face. And we're actually willing to deal with that because we don't have you know, much of a choice, right? Or otherwise you'd be like a schizophrenic saying, no, I'm not gonna do this until I have all the information. But, excuse me, so here's what happened. So uh, the trial close is where you talk to the customer on the phone and you have a conversation about the price. If they agree and they're happy with paying that amount in exchange for your services, now all you have to do is, okay, everything's solved. You just show up to the property you walk the property, you got your contract, sign on the dotted line, get a deposit check, we'll start next Monday. Simple as that. So uh, this is the one thing that I, uh, Tom Reber, Steve Schinholzer, Contractor Sales Academy, I haven't talked to these guys in a long time, but they kept saying something that was sticking in my head. You're not showing up to give the customer a quote you're showing up to collect a deposit check. So when you have that frame of reference in your mind, very clearly, I am not, think about, say this to yourself, I'm not going to this property to walk around for 45 minutes with a customer unless I'm collecting a deposit check. Okay, so if you, if you reverse engineer that conversation in your head, well then that means that I'm gonna have to have a very upfront conversation with that client on the phone before I even show up there. So this is how you can go from first gear where you're just pedaling really fast and you can move to second, third, fourth gear. Um, excuse me, I just ate some Indian food and it was delicious, very spicy. So if you don't have any profit margin, you're just spinning your wheels going nowhere and I, I know all about this I know about being frustrated banging my fists on the table being ang in anxiety not making the money that I want to make thinking it's something wrong with the industry things like that so okay Cody was that to me what about the customer wanting to wait to tell you where the plants start growing how do you get the contract signed then and there Wait one second. Oh, these are phenomenal questions. I should do another live and just answer the, to the best of my ability because there's a lot of stuff I don't know. Beautiful. You guys are extremely intelligent and conscious. If the customers are telling me I'm two to 500 more than the big landscape companies in my area, what do I do? Chris T. 
That's interesting. Yeah, I've sat in people's living rooms going to collect a deposit check, drafting up a landscape design to redo their property. And I'm like, okay, it's going to be 14 grand to do all this. And then I was straight up duped by customers one time. They set me up. After the whole presentation, they were smart too. I got to give it to them. The guy goes in the drawer and he says, well, this is what the big XYZ company is going to do actually everything. But they're going to do it for two grand cheaper. Can you beat that, Kelphus? I was like, you son of a gun. You literally just drug me through all this just so you could... So I could be like your little guinea pig? And I did all the math and I was like, you know what? I walk. I don't want to give it to the other company. A bigger company could do it cheaper because if they got more guys working on the job, they got more equipment, they've got maybe materials that they can access faster for cheaper prices. I mean, they're literally cookie cutter. They can come in and just, I just got off the phone with Phil Saris from Dirt Monkey University. We were on the phone for like, like 35 minutes. He's a smart dude. Dude, he's crushing it in Atlanta, Georgia, Georgia in this landscape company. He says, because they've been doing landscaping for 20 plus years, right? He says they can go in and do these uh, retaining wall patio whole install rip out redo projects and just literally be in and out in like two three days doing these uh you know I, I can't quote him directly but you know 20 30 40 50 thousand dollar jobs and I'm on the phone with this guy I'm like dude you guys you must have all the kinks iron out like you just and it was very impressive to talk to him about that so um but he's also doing it for the higher prices too cherry picking so I think that the problem is with your with your marketing if you don't have enough leads coming in so get better at positioning yourself your company uh, on, on the internet uh, your website and try to establish and separate yourself from that company and if you can't then you just have to walk and go to the next person that's a that's a great thing I'm not afraid to walk if you got so many leads coming in that that you can't so there's more customers that need it done than companies that can do it. If you have enough leads coming in, then you can just say no and just, okay, I'm not the right fit for you. I'll go to the next, 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 yes. Cool. What up now? I love you guys, you guys are the shit. You guys are awesome. I'm out of here. We have 123 people on here right now. This is a doubt. Pick up your phone and pre-qualify ideal remodeling. Ask bold questions. If I come out there and my price is 5K, what happens next? <laughs> yeah, you can be bold because if you're doing it from an attitude of serving your customer, right? It's going to be awesome. What's up, Kenneth Washington? All right, cool. I just got uh, back from sitting down with my accountant and um, I think my paranoia uh, well a healthy paranoia is paid off a little bit I have accidentally overpaid in taxes it wasn't by accident it was very intentional so stuff is turning up Kelphis man uh, the book Profit First by Mike Michalowicz is that book scared me, bro. Like I literally went out and opened up a bunch of bank accounts. So like 30% of everything goes for taxes. Then there's a, there's an emergency account. Then there's a profit account. Uh, there's an account specifically said called saving up for a house. Then I just put a little bit of money in all the time for my wife and I. Like because of going from being flat flat broke and getting sued and having nothing and being in anxiety and fear all the time. There's this line, right? Check this out. This is so dope. I want to make a video about this. There's this line. No, the line's way down here. Here you go. If you're below this line, your life is in pure poverty. You're suffering constantly. It's 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 a gruesome, fiery hell, right? Because you're in the water drowning to death. But if you just go out and just build a little bit of financial establishment, just enough to get above the line. That's all. Just a couple extra thousand a month. You know, it could be. Now, 80% of your problems are gone. And you literally can't believe it. You mean to tell me if I would have just built a little boat 
and that you, your boat is your little landscape company or whatever you're doing. And now you got a boat and you're out there hustling and you're making your own money. 80% of all that shit's gone. Now you have a whole new set of problems, but I think nothing's worse than working for someone else and being stuck in a job you hate. Not you know. So it's, it's interesting how all the information that we have at our fingertips with YouTube. Um, uh, very soon, I'm putting out a new online course, uh, two of them. One is called uh, Keith Kelfis's Business Marketing Blueprint. And then the next one is the whole enchilada that's called the Marketing ROI Online Course. It's all the private recordings for the live conference, the workshop that I did, plus step-by-step -step screen cast presentations that walk you through you know, how to get your business set up on Amazon services, how to uh, Google steps for strategic uh, five-star reviews, uh, website, copy, email, how to, how to like automate the whole sales and marketing portion of your service business, including how to hire virtual assistants and virtual receptionists to answer the phone for you and help um, qualify customers over the phone to your, your booking, your scheduling, the invoicing, following up with clients, and then managing your QuickBooks for you and how you can do that all very cheaply by hiring people part-time for 15 bucks an hour from anywhere in the United States all the way to Bangladesh to Russia. Uh, I've learned a lot. There's a lot of loopholes. You don't have to hire some, you know, uh, depending on the size of your business, because I'm not there yet. I don't have a million dollar business myself, but I've learned some cool little tricks. You can hire a part time virtual secretary who's actually works for like three different, four different landscape companies, and you can hire as little as five, 10, 15 hours a week. So, what if you hired her for uh, three days a week and she came in, she reconciled your QuickBooks? Uh, she got it. She submitted all the quotes. She did all these things, and now you're literally paying her. You're only paying a couple hundred dollars a week instead of having to like lease out an office and then pay a secretary like eighteen dollars and put her on payroll and work comp and, and and taxes and all this shit. And then now you, you're in anxiety because you're, you know, what if you get slow? That stuff can stress you out, right? Oh, careful adding employees. I gotta hire hire call a guy right back uh, after this that I might I'm uh, hiring right now but um so I'll put a link in the description below and uh, to so you can be notified when the marketing ROI online course comes out and then there's other stuff that I just can't tell you yet but thank you so much and I'll talk to you soon and okay, this is it 2019 we're in a, a beautiful position a beautiful position and if you're uh, by chance going through some hard stuff I think that it's just a launching pad that'll set you up for a really really good time what up though all right later I'm out of here get that 